it's Leah from Mommyash, and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Um, this week, I have decided to do a tutorial on how to create realistic uh, fold type effects, kind of how to get that folded over look. Um, let's say you had a page in real life, and most papers have an A and a B side, right? Uh, where you would be folding uh, the one side over so you could see part of the other design. Well, how do we do that? Well, I'm starting with a base paper here, this orange, um, and the next thing I'm going to do is just copy and paste this black paper on top of it. So I'm going to control A, control C, and just a control V on top. I'm going to transform this just a bit because I want it to have a bit of a, a border around it. I want to be able to see that um, orange underneath. So I'm locking my layers right there and uh, we're going to just say like 90%. Why not? I don't know. What do you think? Too, too, too much? Maybe 95? 95! 95. All right, 95 wins. <laughs> okay, well now what? Okay, so I have this paper. I want this one to be folded over and I want to see the uh, other side of the paper right so what are we gonna do well I want you to use your polygonal lasso tool which is super cool super cool and we're gonna use it it's like scissors and the nice thing with this tool specifically is that it gives us a nice straight line so um, you click on your lasso tool if you right click you'll see here the polygonal lasso tool so um, I like to start from the outside area just to make sure that I'm I know that it's picking up all the bits that I want all right so if I want to we'll start with a small ish turn so um, where I just click I do click click right it does it by little um, you know like little anchors so I, I might want a perfect 45 degree or not. If you hit your shift key, it'll do a perfect 45 for you or straight, you see. But I don't want it to be perfect because that's no fun. All right. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to click here above as soon as I've gotten over the top. And once I get it to um, where the beginning was again, you'll see the, there's like a little circle. And it's like, hey, you made it to the end. And now we have this selection. So this is the area that I'm going to be the turning over. Well, how do we do that? I'm going to do a control C. All right. So I'm, I'm copying that bit of the paper and then I'm deleting it. <gasps> Why did I do that? Don't worry. Now we're just going to do a control V and paste the, the piece that we just took out. So as you see here, it's like, hi, what's up guys? I don't like you anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is now that I have this separate piece right here that fits in perfect right there um, and its own separate layer, I'm using it as a template for my B side of the paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit, transform, we're going to flip vertical, right? And then we're going to flip horizontal. You could probably just use your um, the tool itself too. Look at me, I'm so slow this morning. I'm like, where is the transform at? I don't remember. I did vertical first, right? So horizontal next. Um, and that gives us our paper, um, as you see there, exactly the way we want it, exactly where the fold should be, right? And you can kind of see right there. And, and we could add a shadow and be done with it. But like I said, I want to see the other side of the paper. So next up, I'm going to grab this paper, totally different uh, paper. So I have to do a control A, control C. I'm going to click on my little tabbed layer here. And we're going to actually name this so we know fold. All right. And I'm going to control V it in there. <laughs> so now we have this paper in there. But I'm going to take it a step further because that's what we do. And we're going to imagine that if this, pa I'm going to make it a little smaller, but we're going to imagine if this paper was folded like that, would it, um, would it be a perfect up and down like that? Or would it actually be at an angle, which my computer is being slow and not wanting me to do what I want to do. Oh no, stop it. Stop. I promise I even got a new graphics card and everything. 
is just being difficult. But but you get what I mean, right? Like, um, if you want to be particular about it, like like I like to be, um, change the angle of the paper so it makes more sense. So if it was a straight up and down paper, it wouldn't technically... Does that make sense? I'm probably not making a lot of sense. But you get me sort of, right? Yes, you get me. Okay. Well, now we're going to take it all a bit further. I'm going to zoom into this area so we can see what we're working with a little more clearly. Woo! Right there. Okay. So here we have our folded over paper, our B side of the paper. Um, we have our tab, right? The paper, the base paper underneath it. Great. Um, I forgot to do something initially, but it's all right. We're going to go ahead and duplicate our tab layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Duplicate layer. Now don't freak out. Uh, anytime you duplicate a layer, the layer you clipped onto it is going to declip. So just control alt G back onto our tab. And this one becomes our tab shadow. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is the base layer or the one that we duplicated, whatever, the one that's going to be our shadow. We have two. This is one that's clipped to. This is our extra. We're going to color overlay it. Um, I do to black. It's my default. So whenever I color overlay, it just does it. I'm going to rasterize the layer style. I am going to then slow down a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to go to edit, transform, warp. Or you could do a puppet warp if you wanted to, but we'll just use regular warp for now. Um, so as I move this, you can see that this is my shadow. This is my shadow. Well, it's the paper shadow. It's not mine. My shadow is big and fluffy around the middle. Um, but yeah, this is where you would play around trying to get a shadow that was that's a little more um, true to form, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we like to, if, if the paper is kind of flipped up like that, then the shadow would go down a bit like that, depending on where the light's hitting it. So there's our shadow. Um, what I like to do with this is I like to clip this layer underneath and I'm going to show you why. Um, I'm going to add a blur for the shadow, right? So we're going to get a blur and just a little bit like that. I like it. Well, you see here that there's this part of the shadow. I don't want that there. I don't want this bit out there that, that bothers me. So if I clip it to the layer underneath, it takes that away. Um, so now I'm just going to change the blending mode to a linear burn. I'm going to change the opacity to maybe 50%. Uh, actually, since it's a black paper, maybe 75%. There we go. All right. Um, are we done? No. So that gets us our shadow. That gets us our little tab. Fantastic. Um, next, we're going to call, I need to name my layers so you guys know what I'm doing. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, we're going to call this paper B. Why not? I'm going to add a layer above paper B. And we're going to name this layer lighting. All right. Don't be afraid. This is the fun part. All right. You're going to get out your paintbrush tool. Um, go ahead. It can be the hard round paintbrush that normally pops up. That's cool. Um, you get to play with the size that you're most comfortable with. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to get this down to maybe 100 pixels, I think. I'm not going to get too hung up on all of it because I know I'm going to change uh, some things about it. But um, we're going to work with white and black. All right. Uh, and initially it's going to look a little crazy, but trust me, I promise it'll it'll end up looking neat. All right. So I'm imagining this paper and I know how papers look whenever they're bent a little bit. There's going to be a highlight along here because that's where the light's going to hit it. There might be a little bit of a highlight here and then a little bit of a shadow toward the middle where the bend is, right? So I just take my um, paintbrush. That's where the shadow is going to be. Then I take white. I'm going to put a little bit right there and then I'm going to follow along the fold line there. All right. Like I said, don't be afraid. Um, once you've done that, you're going to go to Filter, Blur, and we're going to increase the blur a lot, a lot, lot. 
like that. See, it makes it look a little more realistic, I think. Um, not so hard, see? So just play around until you're happy with the way it looks. All right, so for me, liking the way it looks, I'm at 72.1, great. All right, now we can change the blending mode on this as well. If you don't like it at normal, you could change it to perhaps linear light, um, makes a very strong white, um, kind of almost like a vivid light <laughs> effect. And you could always change the opacity of that as well. I kind of like the way that I'm, I'm liking linear light lately. I've, I've only just started playing with it more. Um, and I'm also noticing like right now, right away that I think I would like a little bit of a shadow right there, a dark, um, within the paper. So I'm going to add yet another piece of lighting for the bend. We're going to call this bend shadow. I'm going to get out my black again. And I think I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light just right away. Again, I'm still using this hard round brush. And I know you can't really see what I'm doing right away like that. But it'll make sense in a second. Um, I'm going to do a blur, but I'm not going to do as strong of a blur this time. And in fact, I don't think soft light's working for me. We'll change to hard light so I can see better what's going on. And remember, it's okay to not have it perfect because in reality, our the shadows aren't going to be, you know, like this perfect straight line. That's that's not what's realistic. All right, now filter blur so you can see what I'm doing. Again, um, that makes a huge blur. We don't want it to be too large. Where we want our blur to be, yeah, maybe more like that. Right there, that looks good. There we go. Um, I'm gonna change, so there we go. <laughs> That's turning the lighting back on so you can see. Here's our bend shadow, which is a bit very dark right now, which we're gonna change, don't worry. Um, we could change this to even uh, a linear burn and turn down the opacity. I just, I just want it just a little bit like that. And that was my phone. So now you can see we have this bent paper. Um, again, I'm not sure about the lighting 100%, the linear light. So I'm going to change that back to hard light and see if I like the way that looks a little better. This is on darker color instead of the one that I set it on originally. Let's turn it back. <laughs> it's just doing what it wants to do because I pushed the tab. And now you're probably like, but Leah, you did something. And if, if this is going down, maybe this paper might be going up. That's the next part. I promise I haven't forgotten. So now that we have this tab and everything's kind of um, ready and blended the way it should be, we're going to take our tab layer. We're going to go to edit, transform and warp. And all we're doing is lifting this bit just a little bit up and out to the side a little, just a little, just like that. Um, you could also maybe just bend like that. Just play with it until you have the way it look, you want it to look, I should say. So again, that's a very small warp. We went from a perfect triangle shape to just slightly different. So it looks like this, the, this bit of the page is moving up. And then the lighting also gives us the illusion that yes, that piece of paper bent over and is, is popping up toward the light. <laughs> it's toward the light. Um, <laughs> anyway, so there we go. We have a piece of paper with lighting effect. Yay. Um, if you feel like that lighting is too vivid, again, all you have to do is turn down, um, the, the layer effect to make it, uh, the opacity is strong, very strong or not very strong <laughs> as you want, just like that. Um, and then once you have that all put together, I like to group my layers together. That way I, I know when I'm making uh, the layout, what that bit right there is. This is going to be a little different because I have the shadow plus, uh, you know, the shadow underneath plus uh, this part here, which actually I guess I could technically go ahead and merge these together once I was done and then clip those that probably made no sense. Once you have it all happy and this layer is the way you want it, 
you can merge your layers together. So select your tab and all the lighting layers, merge layers together, and then you can do a control alt G. So it's also clipped to this base layer there. You see, that's what I mean. So there, paper, shadow, the original paper, bam. What this allows us to do is whenever we are working with our layout and let's say there is a piece of paper underneath that, we can, um, let me open up a piece of paper to put underneath it so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and I shouldn't take a forever to just pick out a paper. Let's take the blue, why not? Um, what I mean is that if I did a, a control V and let's say it was a smaller piece of paper and I wa I'm wanting to maintain what I'm doing here like that, see? Um, that way that effect is on top and again, you don't even have to keep it clipped initially. I'm mostly doing it because I didn't want that bit of shadow. That that That's all. So again, control V. And that's that. Now, uh, the same thing works if you're wanting to do a very large um, fold. Let's say you had uh, your journaling and a picture underneath it, and then it's folded all the way. Again, just use that polygonal lasso tool. You take it. And basically you're just making it that it's a mirror of, um, of the fold. So I do a, uh, for those, it would just be a horizontal transform. So flip horizontal and, um, and that's it. So let's add a shadow to this paper. So it actually looks like it's, uh, you know, on top of the other one. So I can feel special for a second paper. All right, there you go. I hope this has been a helpful tutorial. Um, keep your eyes open for a new set of templates where I have used this um, method of lighting for you to be able to quickly create more dynamic 3D sort of um, page effects that will be released Friday the 24th. Anyway, you all have a fantastic day and I hope you enjoy Tutorial Tuesday. Bye-bye.